Hi, I'm Kevin Dunnan, and you're watching Hip World Gourmet. Good morning, you've caught me. I'm under one of my favorite trees in Dumbroni. It's actually the tree that inspires me the most to come up with new recipes. As I'm looking through a Thai book today, it's just amazing. So why don't we go and get inspired in our kitchen now? Let's go. So here we are in the kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to do a really, really special soup, one of my favorites. Actually, it's a, nearly a trade secret, but I'm going to share it with you. It's sweet, sweet potato and coconut soup. And again, there's a curry influence in there as well. Finish with coconut cream, finish with some butter. <laughs> it's, it's a taste that you'll remember for the rest of your life. It's superb. Followed by a really fresh main course. Great for, for summer, summer dish or something like that. It's baked, baked cod with a herb crust, served on organic greens, and some uh, pom puree, some really, really creamy Irish potatoes. And then, and then we're gonna finish it off with a decadent, and this is a dessert that should probably be closed, or eaten behind closed doors, and that is a chocolate torte. It's gonna be served warm, the chocolate's gonna be oozing out, out, out of the torte, and we're gonna serve it with burnt orange sauce. So, let's get started with the, with the soup. So what I have here is the sweet potatoes and some onions. So we just, you don't have to be too fussy with these. Chopping them up. Okay. So roughly, roughly dice them. Again, don't have to be too fussy. Okay, we turn on the heat on the stove. On your butter. Very important to use butter in the soup because it actually uh, makes it really, really rich and creamy. It's, it's, uh, makes it, these fundamental things that I'm showing you here about making soups, they're crucial because if you do this wrong, I mean, you see some people that are just throwing their vegetables into, into a stock or into water and boil it up and then puree it, season it, and think, think that they've made a homemade soup. Yeah, they have made a homemade soup, but there's nothing special about it. The way I'm showing it here is all the vegetables are salted off, so you're, you're really extracting the flavors of the, of the veg. So you're starting your soup correctly, so you're getting really, really good, intense flavors. Stick off the stem of that. Okay, we're going to add our veg. Remember, always season your veg at the start of cooking. Extracts the flavor from it. A little bit of... I say we're gonna put a little bit of curry powder into it. This is a, a Madras curry powder. You can use a milder, milder or, or hotter one. Again, per, to your personal taste. It is kind of nice to leave it in. You know the way sometimes they say, don't leave, take some ingredients out, put some in. But this actually works really, really well with, with uh, sweet potato. Just kind of, kind of gives that interesting twist to a soup. Okay, at that stage we're going to add, add a little bit of uh, white wine. Smell that curry now. Okay, and some coconut cream, coconut milk. Doesn't that look great? We can really eat it the way it is. So we're going to blitz this now. 
plug this in. You can turn it off while you're doing this. If you don't have one of these, these are very handy, but if you don't have one of these, you can always use your blender. Okay, turn the heat back on on that. Plug this back in. Plug the heat back in there. Bring it back up to the boil. We're going to add some full cream. Just add a few more calories in there. Basically you want, you want a soup that's just going to coat the back of the spoon. Like, see the way it's falling off the spoon there? That's really the consistency that you want to the soup. Not too thick. Now you might have noticed something here that and most of my food that we do in turn, opposed to desserts, everything else, is that we actually don't use any flour at all. Everything is a reduction. There's no flour in this soup at all. Although you've got sweet potatoes in there, but if I was making a leek and saffron, saffron soup, I wouldn't use any flour either. It's not necessary. And then there's so many people out there that are celiacs today, is that it's, you know, there's no problem. They can eat whatever they want. That's not spoiling it. That's special, <laughs> even though if I say so myself. Put the salt and pepper. What I'm gonna do now is it's, it's, I'm gonna mount the soup with a little bit of butter. What this actually does, it actually gives, gives it that soup a velvet texture. This is completely optional whether you want to do this or not. I certainly recommend it because if you're gonna put in this much cream, this many calories, you might as well go all the, all the way. So you want to do it into a small cube. Okay, you just drop it in to the soup. Now, tip here: so once you add once you add the the butter to your soup, never put it back on the heat to reboil. Now, if you want to reheat your soup, put it, on the, put it on the heat, but very slowly, just bring it up to the temperature. But don't vigorously boil it, because if you vigorously boil it, it will actually separate, your soup will separate. But if that happens, see all these tips. If that happens, you just add a little bit more cream, cream to your soup, and it will bind it back together again. So never fear. Okay, just with, with uh, some chives there. I'm just going to keep one aside here. Just ch chop it. Chop it finely. We're going to add that to some whipped cream. Give that a stir. Dollop of whipped cream on top. And a few crispy sweet potatoes, and they're basically just cut very thinly, put into the oven or under the grill until they go crisp. Try and get them to stand there for you. They're struggling with me. Doesn't really matter because once they're in the soup, there you have a fantastic pot of really good vegetables married together, cooked slowly together, infusing the flavours of an Asian influence in, into it. Crispy, then you're getting the textures in which you've got the, the crispy vegetables, a bit of fresh herbs just to really drive home the freshness of the, of the soup. So now we're, we're going to go down to Green Acres which is a delicatessen. You're going to find 
all sorts of ingredients in there. There's delicatessen like this all over the world in every city all over the world. So let's go down there. And then when we come back, we're gonna go on to the main course. All right. So here we are in the beautiful Viking town of Wexford and we're down at Green Acres Delicatessen. So we're going to go inside, I want to show you around some beautiful food in here. Hi hey Donald, how are you? Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. The place is looking fantastic as always. This is a, I love your olive selection and your semi sun dried tomatoes. Can I try one of these? Mm, they're delicious, really good. Fantastic array of cheeses. I see you've got a lot of Irish cheeses here. Now, well, Irish cheese be about 70% of the cheese we carry. But you also have your international brand, well known brands as well. Oh, well, yeah, obviously, you have to carry your calendar and the usual French cheeses and Italian cheeses. And out of the out of the Irish cheeses, what's the most popular? Is it well, we find this local ghost cheese from Minigaur would be one of our better cheeses. I know well, it's excellent. Yeah, really, really good. I am indeed, yeah. Places. Also the usual vintage cheddar. Good old Wexford vintage cheddar. Can't excellent it. cheese. Great. Listen, place looking great. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Good to Let's see get you. on. All right, thanks for being. I love Green Acres, it's a superb delicatessen. I could spend all day here between the, the wine, the food, and the fisher gallery. But we must get back to the kitchen because we've got things to be doing. Cooking up, let's go. So here we are back in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed Green Acres as much as I did. Looking around, I could spend hours in there between looking at the wine and the cheeses and the, and the chocolate and whatever. So anyways, we're back here now. We're going to do our main course, which is uh, the fillet de cod, which is caught locally off the coast, east coast of Ireland, which is just about a mile from our house. And uh, it's beautifully, beautiful, fresh cod. We're going, to, we're going to put a nice little herb crust on one of the pieces, not on both pieces. And then we're going to serve it on an organic salad. I'm going to show you how to reheat mash that you had from lef leftovers from yesterday's dinner, which is a really easy way of doing it and it's still as good as it was yesterday. So let's, let's, start with the, let's start with the cod. So you can see here I've got three pieces of cod here. I'll probably just use two, it's probably big enough for a portion. So you're kind of building, building your plate already, like just kind of shaping your plate and how you want it to look. So you, again, you get your, your cod. place it like this just onto a pan I'm just doing one portion here but if you can use a bigger pan to uh, if you're more than just one of you cooking at home then just put some knobs of butter over top again you can have this ready earlier on in the day and uh, just come back to it after you start serving at your main course I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil over it and don't forget your seasoning, your salt and pepper, right? And salt. Now, we're ready to go into the oven. So we're gonna put that in the oven for about seven minutes. And quite a hot temperature, 230 degrees Celsius. And I've got, on the oven, I've got, got it on the fan with the heat coming down from the top, coming down. So now we're going to show you how to reheat the mash. Turn on your heat there. Okay. Put in some cream. Okay, you want that to come to the boil. And it's very important to bring that to the boil before you put, add in your mashed potato because if you put your mashed potato in now when it's cold, the cream is just going to mix into the mashed potato and it'll be very hard to heat your mash then, otherwise.
Drop in your mesh. Don't be afraid of it. That's basically your mash reheated from yesterday, so which works really well. So we're going to start building our plate now. Let me grab out our plate. Because by the time we have this all, all together, the cod will be just ready. We're going to sit the sit the cod on top on top of the potato. So we're going to again building your lettuce in your hand like a bouquet of flowers. Again, this is what I'm saying. I'd like to I mean this. This is a this is the main course. You could just serve on its own for lunch. If you're not too hungry, you still want a bit of salad. Down the side. Some oven dried tomatoes. Which you saw down in Green Acres, so you can actually buy those already made. And they're actually very good. Put them inside. These are roasted onions with some balsamic vinegar. Basically, at the end, of the, when you're doing a roast, put some, just quarter your, your red tomato or your red onions, brush them over with some balsamic vinegar, sprinkle some brown sugar, leave them in the oven for about a half an hour or so, and they start to cook. The brown sugar starts to caramelize and marries marry in the balsamic vinegar and in, induces the flavors into the onion. That's a great, great thing. Do a bunch of them. Leave them in your fridge, just pick away at them. Great nibblies and healthy too. So with just a bit of balsamic vinegar. Drizzle it over. Let's check this cotton and see how we're getting on. That's perfect. That's great. Let's give it more to the center of the plate. Again, with your balsamic vinegar reduction. Don't be too fussy with it. Finish it off. Sprig of rosemary. And finally, I'm just going to just put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on the top. So there you have your baked cod, a little bit of herb crust, organic salad, served simply.
we are to the lover's dessert. This is dessert that's going to have you drooling from the mouth. It's chocolate torte, but it's baked and it's served warm. The chocolate oozes out of the out of the tor torte. It's served with a burnt orange sauce, and if you like, you can serve some vanilla ice cream with it as well. But it's it's absolutely amazing. We're going to start off by by doing um, rolling out some sugar pastry. Put it into. We're going to do this this torte in individual. You can actually do it in a, in a full torte if you want, a full size. Again, let it fall into, into the, side of the, the side of the dish so you're not pushing it in so it doesn't stretch. Get your rolling pin over top. There you go, very simple. So we're going to cook that blind and by Cooking it blind. Put a bit of greaseproof paper inside and some rice or lentils. What do you have? Wherever you have there, you want to put some weight on the pastry so it doesn't rise. Into the oven for about 10 minutes, 185 degrees. And then while that's cooking in the oven, we're going to start with the mixture, the chocolate mixture. So I have. That's <coughs> Calibou chocolate. We buy it in here in some chocolate buttons. Really, really rich in cocoa. It's a very good chocolate. So you need to melt that. So we'll just get up our other bowl now, because we want to, what we're going to do is we're going to get our egg yolks into the bowl. Some guys don't want to get in there. Some whole eggs. Some caster sugar. You want to give that a good mix. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to add in the egg mixture. Egg and sugar mixture. Stir that around. It's kind of gluteny, eh? You can already tell what that's going to look like. It's going to be really gooey and uh, fantastic. Take out the, the beans, just push it down again. Okay, and that's ready for your mixture. Pour it in. Don't forget, put plenty in there. Back in the oven for about uh, at 185 degrees. And we just keep an eye on it because we want it to kind of uh, caramelize and crystallize on top, but still gooey on the inside. So now we, now we need to make our burnt orange sauce. So I have a pan here. Let me just get this out of the way. So on with the heat. Okay, so we have some orange segments here. They are just a segment without any of the pip or the white or the peel on it. You don't have to do them like that. You can take the, take the skin off, slice them down. You might find it easier. Pretty straightforward to do anyways. Heat up your, your pot. Put them into your pot. Just keep a couple there for garnish. 
little bit of brown sugar. Let that start to caramelize. You can start smelling the caramelizing the brown sugar going into the orange. The or orange is actually a fantastic um, fruit to go with chocolate, as, as is raspberries for that matter. So you can, in fact, you could do raspberries like this as well. Okay, we're gonna add a bit of uh, Grand Marnier to the oranges. Yeah, I can swear. Okay, and that happens basically if you have a canopy overhead and it can be quite low. Just pull your pot out like that. You've got loads of space up there for the flame to go. Basically what you're doing is you're actually letting the alcohol of the liquor burn off. So you're getting the true orange flavor of, of that liqueur, which is amazing. I'm just gonna let that simmer there for a while. Let's check on our, on our tort. Wow. And we're ready here. Look at that. It's right there. Doesn't that look fantastic? Unbelievable. Sauce is ready. Chocolate torts ready. We've got our cream by standby. All I need is my wife here to eat it with me now. See the way what I was talking about? See the way it's cracked there and the oozing of the chocolate's coming out? over top. Okay. Put the orange sauce over it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna break that open so you can see what I'm talking about. Finish off with a good dollop of cream. And just let that melt into the, the chocolate torte. There you have a, a decadent chocolate, chocolate uh, dessert that should be eaten by two of you together. We started off today with, with our uh, sweet potato and coconut soup. Followed by baked cod with a herb crust, organic salad, caramelized onions, finished with balsamic vinegar, and we finished with this. So there you have another day in hip world gourmet for the love of food. Schlanten.